guys, welcome back to Jedi Fallen Order, where we will do some more reading of the databank entries. Uh, in fact, this will be the last video of the databank entries. And then normally in the next video, we will read through all the technical guide stuff which is all the, the types of enemies and I think from what I saw uh, this should be doable in one video but yeah, that's for next time now let's get into the characters starting with the well, the protagonist Cal Kestis. Number one, Cal Kestis. Cal Kestis is a young scrapper working on the remote world of Braca, but hiding a dangerous secret. He was a Jedi Padawan. When his close friend Prof is about to be killed in a tragic accident, Cal uses the Force to save him. The event reveals Cal as a Jedi to the deadly killers of the Empire, the Inquisitors, and he barely escapes aboard a rogue starship thanks to two new friends. Number 2. Order 66 Cal carries trauma from the horrifying experience of Order 66 when he and his master, Jaro Tapal, were attacked by their own troops. With Tapal's help, Cal escaped, but his master was killed. In his dying moment, Tapal gave Cal his lightsaber and these words of advice, trust only in the Force. terrifying experience on Dathomir, Cal travels to Ilum to construct a new lightsaber. With the help of his new master, Seer Janda, he is able to conquer the horror of his past and forge his new Jedi weapon. Cal moves forward, now determined to complete his mission, let go of his tragic past, and choose his own destiny. is Seer Janda. Number one, Seer Janda. Seer Janda is a former Jedi who survived Order 66. After years of seclusion, she teamed up with Starship Captain Grease Tritus on a secret mission to rebuild the Jedi Order. After saving Cal from the Imperial Inquisitorious, she begins to mentor him. Number two, Apprentice of Ino Cordova. Seer reveals her mentor was a Jedi named Ino Cordova, a loner who studied lost cultures and often challenged the wisdom of the Jedi Council. While the two remained in contact throughout their years as a Jedi Knight, they were never very close. Number three, Seer's Padawan. Seer shares an awful memory about her past. During the Jedi Purge, she was captured and tortured by the Empire. She was able to escape, but her Padawan was not so lucky. Years later, the event has left her scarred and reluctant to use the Force. Number 4. Seer's Past Cal learns Seer lied, hiding that her former Padawan Trilla is the second sister. 
Wednesday was tortured by the Empire. She was forced to betray Trilla. The Empire then captured Trilla and turned her into a, into an Inquisitor. Seer, devastated, used the dark side of the Force in order to escape. Fearful, she will slip back to the dark. Seer vowed to never use the Force again. And number five, a Jedi's resolve. Cal helps Seer come to terms with her violent past and let go. Armed with Trilla's lightsaber, she uses it to knight Cal. Together as Jedi, they venture to the evil depths of the Fortress Inquisitorius to retrieve the Holocron and complete their quest. The next character is Grease Tritus. Number one, Grease Tritus. Grease Tritus is a four-armed Latero and captain of the Mantis. He works for Seer Chanda and appears to hold her in high esteem despite his otherwise circum... no... <laughs> curmudgeonly nature. After saving Cal on Braca, Grace reluctantly accepts the young Jedi's friendship. Number two, Infamous. Unknown to his co-pilots, Grease hides a dangerous secret, a large gambling debt to the Axian brood. While tracking Grease, the brood's ruthless bounty hunters discover he's traveling with a Jedi, a much more valuable prize. They capture Cal and BD-1 for payback against Grease's debt. Grease and Seer rescue Cal defeating the brood and forcing Greece to come to terms with his addiction. And number three, the pilot of Mantis. Over their adventure, Greece warms to his friends, revealing his affection for food and his great-grandmother. His piloting skills are put to the test forcing Grease to become the hero he never thought he could be. The next character is BD-1. Arguably the real hero of the story. Definitely the cutest character in the whole game, in my opinion. Entry number one, BD-1. Cal encounters BD-1 while exploring the mysterious world Bogano. BD-1 is curious, good-natured, and utterly fearless in the face of danger. He has quickly grown attached to Cal and seems intent on leading the young Jedi towards something or someone waiting inside the ancient vault that looms over Bogano's horizon. Number two, encrypted files. Upon learning that Cal is a Jedi, BD-1 reveals an encrypted memory log of Jedi Master Eno Gordova. The log proves vital to beginning Cal's quest and guiding him on the journey to retrieve the Holocron. Jail. Captured along with Cal by the criminal syndicate, the Axian Brood, BD-1 is separated and thrown into a droid prison cell. Known for mer mercilessly scrapping droid parts, the Broods targeted him for dismantlement. Luckily, Cal finds him before the Brood can hurt him, and the two plot their escape together. And number four, my friend. After a fateful event on Ilum, BD-1 
one finally retrieves the last of his memories about his old friend, Ino Cordova. The recordings BD played for Cal were all logs from private conversations between the droid and Cordova. In a final recording from Cordova, BD shares the moment his memory was frozen to encrypt the secret data about the vault. Master Eno Cordova was a scholar and explorer, revered for his knowledge of ancient civilizations. After experiencing a vision of the Order's doom, Cordova hid a holocron containing identities of young Force sensitives in the Pagano Vault. Number two, Vault Requirements. Master Cordova journeyed to Zepho, the homeworld of an ancient civilization of the same name. This same species built the vault on Pagano, where he hid the holocron. On Zepho, he discovered a tomb dedicated to the powerful sage Mictral. Cordova's exploration revealed the existence of a Zepho astrium, a tool that could allow him to access the vault on Pogano. Number three. Influences from Kashyyyk. During his exploration on Zepho, Master Cordova uncovered a temple dedicated to the sage Elrim. This exploration revealed further mysteries of the ancient culture including their fascination with Kashyyyk, the home world of the Wookiee civilization. Curious to learn more, Cordova's path took him to Kashyyyk, where he sought wisdom from his old friend and Wookiee chieftain, Tarful. Number 4. Astrium On Cordova's journey to Kashyyyk, he met with Chieftain Tarful, who knew of an ancient artifact atop the origin tree. Cordova scaled the massive origin tree, where he discovered one of the last remaining Zepho astriums. With the astrium, he was able to access the vault on Pagano and hide in the holocron. And number five, my friend, in his final message, Master Cordova revealed a close connection to BD-1, his faithful companion droid. On their many adventures, they shared close trust as BD-1 recorded Cordova's journey and vital knowledge. When they parted ways, BD-1 agreed to have his memory banks encrypted with this information, beginning his important mission and saying goodbye to one another. And the next character is the second sister. Number one, the second sister. A relentless Imperial Inquisitor, the second sister arrives on Braca to hunt Cal Kestis, a surviving Jedi Padawan. Sadistically toying with her prey, she ruthlessly kills Cal's friend, Prof, before striking. In the attack, Cal is forced to flee, barely escaping, but the hunt has only begun. Number 2. Sears Padawan the second sister revealed that she was once Seer's Padawan, Trilla, whose location Seer gave up under Imperial torture. Trilla was found by the Empire and transformed into an Inquisitor. And number 
number three, an inquisitor is born. When the second sister encounters Cal inside the vault on Bocano, an unlucky maneuver places her saber in his hands, where he witnesses a forced echo of her tragic past. Cal learns Trilla's history as Sears Padawan, including the disturbing details of her capture and transformation into the second sister. The revelation leaves Cal momentarily paralyzed, allowing her to steal the holocron. Next is the ninth sister. Number one, the ninth sister. The sardonic ninth sister joins the second sister in hunting for Cal Kestis on Braca, a powerful sister's presence creates terror wherever she goes, a fact she relishes. If I make stupid reading mistakes, it's because sometimes it's kind of difficult for me to read the TV from a distance. So, um, it does say do Sister, question mark. The ninth sister faces Cal in the peaks of the origin tree on Kashyyyk. There she reveals her gruesome history as a former Jedi tortured and mutilated into the brutal inquisitor she has become. After an intense battle, Cal defeats her, but is she truly gone? the sequel is coming out in March, I think, or April. So I suspect she will return in that game. Or will she? Next is Night Sister Merin. Number one, a Night Sister. Sister wielding powerful magic threatened Cal on Dathomir. It's unclear how she escaped the massacre of her coven, but her hatred for trespassers is obvious. The Night Sister immediately identified Cal as a threat and commanded the Night Brothers to attack him. Number two, Malakos unveiled. Marin confronted both Cal and Malakos. Enraged, Malakos would ally himself with the Jedi after years of convincing her they were the enemy. Seeing proof of Malakos' deception, she uses magic to unleash a horde of undead Night Sisters to destroy the Outsiders. And number three, a new start. survivors of fallen orders, Merin and Cal begin to trust one another. Having defeated the sinister Malakos, they realize the benefit of working together. Inspired by Cal's words, Merin decides to leave Dathomir with the Mantis crew and pursue her own path in the galaxy. Next is the Wanderer. Number one, the Wanderer. A mysterious wanderer Cal met on Dathomir. He claimed to study lost civilizations and revealed that he is a f that he is familiar with the Night Sisters. In addition to recognizing Cal's lightsaber as a Jedi weapon. Taron Malakos. The Wanderer is revealed to be Taron Malakos, a former Jedi now in hiding. 
betrayed by his own troopers. During Order 66, he crashed on Dathomir, where he succumbed to darkness and madness. Seeking a return to power, he has manipulated Merin and the Knight Brothers in an effort to learn the secrets of their magic. And number three, the fallen Jedi. In their final confrontation, Malikos attempts to convince Cal to join him. Believing the Jedi era is over, the two clash in ideology. The battle escalates. Finally, tipped when Merin helps Cal defeat the sinister Malikos. Next is Jaro Tapal. Number one, Jaro Tapal. The memory of Jaro Tapal, Cal's deceased master, still haunts the former Padawan. An imposing Lassat. Jaro Tapal served the Republic with distinction during the Clone Wars. And number two, trust only in the Force. Jedi Master Jaro Tapal was a general during the Clone Wars who mentored his Padawan, Cal Kestis, with a firm and disciplined doctrine. During Order 66, Tapal was mortally wounded but managed to get Cal to safety. In Tapal's last moment, he passed his lightsaber to Cal. Alright, and the last character entry is simply called Other Characters. Number one, Prauf. On Braca. A scrap worker named Prof befriends and mentors Cal. When an ain't no, when an accident almost claims Prof's life, Cal uses the Force to save him, but recklessly reveals himself as a Jedi. Soon, Imperial Inquisitors arrive for Cal, but Prof gives his own life to save him, allowing Cal a chance to escape. to Saw Carrera, infamous Onderonian insurgent Saw Carrera, leads a group of opposition fighters against the Empire on the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk. Harboring dark vengeance over the death of his sister during the Clone Wars, he lives by a blurred moral line. Considering collateral damage to be necessary evil, he comes to respect Cal as a strong potential ally and useful tool in his endless war. Number three, Mari Kosan. Freedom fighter Mari Kosan serves Saw Gerrera's forces on Kashyyyk in their desperate battle against the Empire. Her bravery and dedication to the cause make her a valuable ally to the Wookiees. She provides Cal with vital information about Wookiee chieftain Torfol, which helps his mission. Number 4. Sork Tormo Merciless and bombastic Umbaran leader of the Axian Brood, Tormo takes great pleasure in his fight club, an infamous arena where the galaxy wagers on open combat against bloodthirsty killers and Tormo's wild menagerie of vicious space beasts. Never shy on humor, he is a mercurial mobster with a penchant for violence and greed. Number 5. Tarful. A symbol of Wookiee resistance, Tarful leads his fighters against the ruthless Imperial occupation of their homeworld. Forced into hiding deep in the forests, he evades enemy capture.
structure, striking out from secret locations by employing asymmetrical warfare. When Cal learns Cordova and Torfel were close friends, he begins a desperate hunt to find him and learn crucial information in his quest. Number 6. Miriana. A brave fighter, Miriana serves Saw Guerrera's forces on the besieged world of Kashyyyk. After losing her husband on Zepho, her journey takes her across the galaxy in her battle against the Empire. And lastly, number seven, Choisik. A former member of Tarful's Freedom Fighters, Choisik was captured during an attack on an Imperial outpost. After the refinery prison break, Choisik became fast friends with Saw's lieutenant. Mari Kozan. Together, they will stop at nothing to save Kashyyyk from the Imperial occupation. Alright, those were the characters. Now for the last uh, section of the databank entries. Empire with only one Subsection Imperial Tech Number One At At The All Terrain Armored Transport or At At or Imperial Walker is the backbone of the Empire's Assault Armor Division. A quadrupedal multi troop transport deployed for heavy ground force assault. They are most often used to eliminate insurgent threats and enforce Imperial occupation throughout the galaxy. They are equipped with a host of formidable offensive capabilities, including gin-mounted long-range heavy blaster cannons, as well as side cannons and blast impervious armor plating. Six power droids, also known as gonk droids, serve as portable power generators in mobile operations or in situations lacking a stable power source. They are utilized by civilians and military alike, often emitting a low honking noise that sounds like the word gonk. Assault Transport, also known as the Republic Attack Gunship, was an armored troop carrier used by the Grand Army of the Republic during the Clone Wars and in the early years of the Empire. Maneuverable and formidable, it provided troops the ability for quick deployment and extraction in heavy combat through extensive types of terrain and climates. Astromech droid. A variety of astromech droids, also known as astro droids, were utilized by the Galactic Empire to complement their vessels, providing routine maintenance and mechanics. They served a variety of repair duties as well as advanced navigational operations, strategic logistics, and data computation.
this weaponized automaton could maneuver over terrain of many types, was fully submersible and armed with various weapon types.